Peter from Bilderboeing. As some of you might know, my cockpit is mainly interfaced using Open Cockpit's carts. I do have a few Pokies cart that I'm very excited about, and then Palulu carts for the servos, but most of the cockpit is interfaced using Open Cockpit's. And the uh, overhead panel up here is interfaced using a expansion cart, three master carts, and two display carts for the seven seg segment displays, and then a Pululu for the servos. And I used the open cockpits, and they're good, and they're cheap, and they're good value, but they're just one thing that's just annoying about them. You see, when you turn on the cockpit, all of the switches are in a random state. It's a random position in the software. Let me go a bit into that. Here, no, on the MasterCard, you have a group, uh, and a group contains nine wires, nine switches, you can say, and then one ground. And that's what we have here with these six switches. They have here I have one, two, three positions, but I don't need a wire for the auto. So can I, I can just have two wires here. So I have two here, I have two here, two here. Down here I just have one wire and one on one. So that's two, four, six, seven, eight, nine. This is nine wires going into the open cockpits master card. When I turn on the cockpit, these switches will be in a random position software wise and Prosim will get that position, that random position, and think that the switches are, this could be in on, and this could be in off, and this could be in close, and this could be in high. Um, and they're just random. But when I click one of these switches, like this one, the master card will read all positions and send the correct signal to Prosim. So when I start the cockpit, when I start it, uh, I need to like activate each group here on the overhead to get the correct position of each switch. And that is rather annoying. It's okay with, with the bleed air over here because once you turn on the APU, you, do, you don't have any bleed air before you turn on the APU and then you click the dual bleed off and activate the APU bleed and then it reads all the all the states here of the switches and then you have the correct uh, the correct signal in ProSim. One place that it's very annoying is over here in the electronics department because the battery switch will be on even though you start cold and dark it thinks the battery switch is on it thinks the standby power is on it thinks the ground power is on and the bus transfer is on but it isn't it's cold and dark and it's uh, it's just annoying. So I have a routine of whenever I sit down, one of the first thing I do is just to, to turn these, flick that one and one of those down there to get the right state of the electronics so that it will go cold and dark. But I think I solved it now. Finally, I went to the Open Cockpits web shop and I got this small box today. Um, and inside here, you find these two little bandits, and they are new microcontrollers for the expansion card. I think it's called version 2, and I have some old expansion cards that contain the version 1 of this. This reads the state of all switches at all time. You don't need to activate each group first. They are 7 euros each, which is rather cheap. Uh, I don't know if it's cheap, because it should work. Uh, in version one as well, it ought to, but apparently it doesn't. So you need to need to spend seven euros um, for each each expansion card. It's not for the master card; it's for the expansion card. So I need two for my entire cockpit. Seven euros each, plus taxes, plus shipping. I ended up paying thirty euros for these two, and a nice little box. I looked at the expansion card and I think it's just a matter of taking out the old one, no soldering needed, and then install this one instead. So let's see how that goes. So welcome upstairs. We are now uh, on the back side of the overhead and welcome to Spaghetti Land. Even though I've tried to manage my wires, um, 
it's still it's still a bit messy down up here. Okay, so this is the expansion card, and this is a microcontroller microcontroller I was talking about. We need to replace. But let me just run through what I got up here. Here's your USB wire coming in, and it's connected the expansion card here to a master card here, which again has a display card for the uh, cabin altitude. I also have with these two gray wires up here a second master card, and up here a third master card right there, and a display card here for my navigation displays. And I also have down here over there a Palulu uh, card for all the wires up here. Okay, but it's this bandit here that we need to concentrate on. And as you might be able to see, all these microcontrollers, they are soldered onto the board, but this is placed in a socket. So it's just a matter of getting it loose and then lose it and then replace it with the new one. Before you do that, you need to make sure where the dent is. There's a small dent here, a small mark on the microcontroller, and that is facing upwards this way. So you need to get it loose, and uh, once you succeed getting it loose, like that, there we are. You can take the new one here, and then just put it into the socket. Let's see if I can do that. It is a bit tricky. You need to bend the legs just a small bit to get it fitted in. There we are. Before you push it down, make sure that the dent on the new one also is placed up there. It fits, and then just push it down. And that should be in. So now it's time to turn on the cockpit and see if all the switches are in the correct state when we turn it on. Make sure not to mess up the old one with the new one here. So I'm just gonna leave it here for now and then uh, put some tape on or something later so that I don't mix it up with the re replacement for my other expansion card. Let's get the same oven running. One of the first thing I noticed when I turned on the computer was that I have two expansion cards connected here. This is the, the one that I didn't replace, and here is the one I replaced, and it's now called UXP Expansion version 2, which means that the microcontroller is working. So let's take ProSim um, panels, which is a program within ProSim. We can see all the switches, and let's just test these over here. I haven't flicked any switches within uh, on the overhead yet. So this should be off, off, auto, off, on, off. Off, 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 auto and on. Let's just go over here and see. This is off, 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 auto and on. I guess it's working. Hydraulic switch is off, anti-ice off. Let's just double check over here. Hydraulic off, anti-ice off. And we just double check these. This should be in generator one and this should be in standby power. As you can see here, generator one and standby power. So if you have the old, if you have the old expansion card, that is well worth a seven euro upgrade. I'm Peter from Bilderberg. You guys take care.